yeah uh, now we'll be starting with the topic the solubility solubility of solute in a given solvent as you all know that we have already discussed in the previous uh, topic that solution consists of two components that is one is the solute and the other is the solvent and we know that uh, for example i'm taking a glass of water and i'm adding to sugar adding sugar to it so sugar is uh, present in a small amount and it gets dissolved so that means sugar is considered as solute and uh, the water which is taken as which is taken in a large quantity and which dissolves the solute is regarded as a solvent so we just uh, we are now considering the solubility of solute uh, in a solvent so what do you mean by the solubility first of all you should know that what actually the solubility is so solubility is that means i'm just explaining with an example just look at the board it's like that you have a uh, you can say a flask which is filled with water right and i am adding salt or you can say sugar to it right so i'll be adding salt and i am just stirring it with the help of uh, stirrer and just stirring it so that it gets dissolved so that means now how much uh, salt get dissolved in water indicates the solubility of a, you can say a solution or a solubility of solute in a solvent or you can say the ability of solvent to dissolve uh, solute in it so similarly like in this case i added salt in the second case i am adding sugar right or i i can take another solute for example i am adding adding sand so in three of the cases when i am considering the salt i am considering the sugar i am considering the sand so they are getting obviously they are getting dissolved in water but the uh, ability of water to dissolve these component is different it is different for salt it is different for sugar and it is different for sand and as we did that there are two three kinds of solutions true solution colloidal and suspension so depending upon it that it is going to form a different kind of solution depending upon the size of the solute particle so coming to the topic that is the solubility that means this water has the ability to dissolve salt sugar and sand and the ability to dissolve all of the all these three is different for a different solute so that means different solute gets dissolved in a given solvent in different at uh, different amount right so that means the solubility so the solubility means the you can say the ability of solute to get dissolved in solvent or we can say that the it is the ability of solvent to dissolve solute in it right so to get a to in order to get a uniform result we have considered the amount of solute we have just fixed the uh, amount of solute as uh, you can say in grams and and the mass of solvent as 100 grams in order to get the uniform result we have just fixed those values so i can just uh, con uh, you can say the manipulate the definition of solubility in a better way that is it is the amount of solute in grams present in 100 grams of solvent so the solubility means it refers to the amount of solute in grams particularly the unit which is used is grams present in 100 grams of solvent so this will indicate the solubility of any substance any solute in a given solvent and the mathematical relation which we are going to use for it is that that means the, how we can get the solubility mathematically that it indicated by the weight of solute divided by the weight of solvent into 100 by doing so we get the percentage the solubility percentage that uh, how much weight uh, you know, how much weight of solute is actually getting dissolved in the given uh, in the 100 grams of the solvent and if in case you don't have the weight of the solvent we can just convert this relation into the weight of solute divided by weight of solution minus weight of solute because weight of solution minus weight of solute is obviously going to give the weight of the solvent and that is what we needed right into 100 
So by using this relation also, we can find the solubility of a solute uh, in a solvent, right? So this is how, uh, uh, this is what we mean by saying the solubility. So uh, just keep in mind the concentration and the solubility both are two different things. Yes, the, in the previous topic we did the concentration and now I'm doing the solubility. Concentration means the amount of solute which is present in a given amount, given mass of solvent. That means, uh, or you can say, I'll just repeat again, just listen to me carefully. We have the, 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 the two definitions that is the solubility and the concentration are two different things. When I'm saying the concentration, it means the amount of solute present in the solution. We are not considering that whether it is dissolved or it is just uh, left uh, or you can say it is just uh, occupying the bottom, right? We are just concerned that how much solute we are adding to the solution. So if uh, when I'm uh, telling you that yes, this much solute I've added to the solution, that means the concentration, that is not the solubility. But when I'm talking about the solubility, it means that the amount of solute which actually dissolves in the given amount of the solvent. So there, in this case, we consider the solubility factor. That means it should be dissolved. It does not matter that yes, it is present. Suppose you are adding 5 grams of uh, sugar to a uh, water in a 100 grams of water or any uh, you can say a known volume if we, have uh, we are taking for the water. So if you are adding 5 grams of sugar into the water, so if we, uh, if I am talking about the concentration, so that means the concentration is 5 grams. You have just added the 5 gram of sugar into the water, right? But when I am talking about the solubility, we mean that how much amount out of 5 grams is is getting dissolved in the given uh, you can say the solvent so suppose if I say that out of 5 gram 3 grams gets dissolved so 3 gram is going to indicate the solubility and 5 gram is going to indicate the concentration so the concentration and solubility both are two different factors right so this is the solubility that the amount of solute that gets actually dissolved you have to mention this word dissolved because when we are talking about the solubility at that solute should get dissolved in it right so uh, for the uniform result, we have just fixed the mass of the solvent as 100 grams. So we can say the amount of solute in grams present in 100 grams of the solvent. So this is how we calculate the solubility. Now on the basis of solubility that which solvent dissolved the solute up to which extent we have just divided this uh, solution into different categories, right? So on what factor I have said? It is on the factor that how um, you can say what is the solubility or which solvent can dissolve solute up to what extent we have just classified the solution into two categories right so the two categories we have is saturated solution and unsaturated solution now what is the difference between the two Unsaturated solution is that which can suppose I've taken a and we are just explaining with an example for better understanding. See, I've taken a you can say a flask which is containing a solvent. The solvent can be anything. It can it is not compulsory that you take water as a solvent always. You can there are many more solvents also. Though the water is a universal solvent, but still we have many more solvents like benzene, carbon disulfide. So many more solvents can be taken. Right, so I've just taken a solvent and I'm just dissolving a solute into it. Right, so what is going to happen? I'm just dissolving the solute, I'm stirring it, solvent is going to dissolve that solute. Right, so it, this is occurring at a, const, at a fixed temperature. That means I'm not altering the condition of temperature, the temperature is fixed. So I'm adding a solute and the solvent, I'm just stirring it and the solvent is just dissolving the solute. And what happens, I add more and more solute, I just stir it, solvent is again dissolving it. But the point will reach when the solvent will, when the solvent will, uh, you can say, the, the will dissolve the solute up to more concentration or it will not dissolve the more uh, solute you can say. Again, I'm just framing an example for you. See, I've taken a, a glass of water. 
and I'm just again I'm adding a sugar to it right I'm adding a sugar sugar I'm just stirring it I've, I've taken a glass of water okay I'm adding a sugar uh, suppose I have added a one spoon of sugar and just stirring it what happens that sugar get dissolved right and the temperature is kept fixed just keep in mind the temperature is fixed I'm not heating the solution or I'm not cooling the solution the temperature is fixed this activity is occurring at a fixed temperature I'm adding the sugar I'm just stirring it and the water is dissolving that uh, given sugar right I just add a uh, one more spoon of sugar to it I'm just stirring it again dissolve that sugar then I add one more spoon I'm just stirring it again it dissolve so sometimes in certain cases what happens when you add more sugar to it it will stop dissolving and we have a kind of solution that which can dissolve uh, like I, I'm adding more and more spoons and it is just that solvent is making that solute dissolved in it so on the basis of that we have two kinds of solution unsaturated and saturated so unsaturated solution is that in which I'm adding a solute and I'm just stirring it and the solvent is just getting it and just making it dissolve in it right I'm adding more and more solute then again it is just dissolving it so that means unsaturated solution is that which can dissolve as much as solute as in a, at a given fixed temperature that means as much as solute I add to it it goes on dissolving dissolving and dissolving right so that means there is the no point is such reached in which the solute is not getting dissolved so those solution which keep on dissolving the solute at a given temperature there comes under the category of unsaturated solution Right, and when we are talking about the saturated solution, suppose I say I've taken a glass of water, I'm adding a sugar to it, I'm just stirring it, what is going to happen? It is also occurring at a fixed temperature, it is just dissolving it. I'm adding more sugar to it, it is dissolving, okay. But when I add, you can say uh, a bowl of sugar to it, and I'm just stirring it, so what happens? Uh, the few uh, crystals of sugar get dissolved, and the few crystals, after stirring also, they are, they are just, uh, we can look at the bottom that they settled at the bottom so that means that saturated solution is not dissolving that uh, you can say the solute more solute at the given temperature so those solution which cannot dissolve as much as solute we add to it at a given temperature they come under the category of saturated right so just uh, repeating again unsaturated can dissolve as much as solute at a given temperature and saturated can dissolve uh, only a fixed amount of solute at a given temperature after that the solute particles uh, go uh, you can say keep on separating and we can see them settle at the bottom right so the solution which can dissolve as much as solute we add is unsaturated and the solute uh, the sol solution which can dissolve solute uh, only up to certain extent at given temperature is said to be saturated and now you are familiar with the saturated and unsaturated we have one more condition which comes under the saturated is the super saturated super saturated now what do you do you have any idea when I'm talking about the super saturated what does it actually means okay tell me what do you mean by a man obviously a male right and when I say a superman then what does it mean it, it, it means that that man has a quality of man definitely but the quality and uh, it, it has uh, many qualities more than uh, qualities which are possessed by the man means you can say the extra powers he has okay so similarly it is a saturated solution but it is a super saturated solution means it has a power of saturation but still it has the extra powers so that is why it is called as super saturated solution right so super saturated solution is that in which it can, uh, it is actually a saturated solution which can dissolve solute more than its saturation level that means that uh, we are adding we are taking a solvent we are adding a solute to it and it it is dissolving that uh, you can say the solute in it and it is getting saturated saturated means a point is achieved where it is not going to uh, dissolve more solute in it right but when I say super saturated that means it is dissolving the solute more than its ability to dissolve that solute in it right so that is called as the super saturated solution now how can uh, you can say this super saturated solutions are made 
So they are just like for example, I am dissolving a nitre, uh, I am I'm making a nitre solution, I am dissolving the nitre in the uh, given solvent at a fixed temperature. What happened? That it, it goes on dissolving but up to a certain level, its uh, dissolving power or you can say the power of the nitre to get dissolved in the solvent sees and it just starts separating out, right? So that means the, uh, the point is, uh, is reached where it has become the saturation, that means the saturation level is achieved. Now, if I wish to make that solution, the saturated solution super saturated, so how can I make then? Make it. I can just make it by increasing the temperature because when I am increasing the temperature, I am just heating it, I am boiling it. So what is going to happen? The ability of solvent to dissolve the solute will increase and how much it is going to increase? It is going to increase more than its saturation level. So that means it will possess the more amount of solute present in it as compared to the you can say the ability of uh, saturated solution to uh, you can say the dissolved uh, to dissolve the solute in it right so it becomes a super saturated solution so anytime we can convert the unsaturated into saturated by heating it and similarly we can make the saturated converted into super saturated by just heating it because when we heat it the ability of solvent to dissolve the solute just increase and it becomes uh, the you can say the solubility just solubility of solute in a solvent just increase. So this is how we can convert the unsaturated into saturated and saturated into the super saturated. So these solutions are, can be interconverted by just increasing the temperature, right? So this is how we classify the solutions depending upon their ability to dissolve the solute uh, in them, right? So uh, these uh, are the three kinds and uh, we are taking one more topic into consideration. We did in a previous lecture that we do have a mixtures in which or you can say a solution in which gases are dissolved in liquid, right? I think you remember. So yeah, the, I'm talking about the carbonated drinks that we all relish to drink, right? So I'm talking about the carbonated drinks. So what is there in carbonated drinks? We have CO2 dissolved in water plus some flavoring agents are there. I told you in a previous lecture that is why we get to have coke, uh, sprite in the different uh, flavors we get. So there is a flavoring agent as well, right. So what happens in the carbonated drinks? So that means solute is gas and the solvent is liquid and they both unite to form a mixture. Mixture comes under the category of solution so obviously it is a solution and out of it it is a homogeneous that means we get to we don't get to see different boundaries between the solute and the solvent right you this you already know now what happens when we are talking about the carbonated drinks so what happens that you must have seen that uh, the, the you can say the bottle of uh, this thing coke or uh, sprite and all they are just bounded by the knob and whenever you just open that knob the you get a fizz sound and sometimes you can say the, the sometimes the the cold drink also moves along with that, right? So you just have to open it carefully, you do that. And you know what is actually in it, what is the, you can say the chemistry involved in that? Obviously it is a solution, a homogeneous solution, but what is, what has actually happened at, if we say about the physical conditions which are required. So uh, we have just increased the pressure, the gases get dissolved in a liquid by just increasing the pressure more you increase the pressure more is the solubility of gas in liquid that is why they are bounded by the knob right they are, they are by, bounded by the cap you see in case of carbonated drinks and what happens when you just open that cap what happens the carbon dioxide the solubility of the gas in the liquid decrease because when you are opening the uh, cap the pressure decrease and when you decrease the pressure the solubility of gas in liquid or you can say the solubility of CO2 in water gets decreased and what happens CO2 just escape uh, through that uh, water in the form of fizz that is why you get whenever you open you just uh, get to see a gas coming out from the cold drink right so it, that means by increasing the pressure if you are increasing the pressure the solubility of gas in liquid is increasing it is also stated in a higher classes by an henry law which states the mass of gas which dissolved at given temperature in the uh, you can say in a given solvent depends uh, in a given liquid depends upon the 
uh, pressure more is the pressure more of more mass of gas gets actually dissolved in the liquid and when you just decrease it then what happens the solubility of the gas in liquid just decrease so that means the gas starts uh, separating out the solute starts separating out from the solvent so by increasing the pressure we can increase the solubility of gas in liquid and similarly if I am increasing the temperature what happens if I am asking you to consider that I am increasing the temperature, what is going to happen? The gas will get, will remain dissolved in liquid or it will just separate out. So what comes into your mind? Yeah, you are right that when we are increasing the temperature, so obviously the gas molecules are gaining the energy and they start moving faster. So that means they, are esca they es just escape and the solubility of gas in liquid decrease. So that means by increasing pressure, the solubility of gas in liquid increase, but by increasing temperature, the solubility of gas in liquid decrease. So this is how the temperature and pressure factors affect the solubility of substance in a, of solute in a solvent. So this is how we carry out the solubility. And moreover, now we'll be studying about the solubility curves as well. So when we are talking about the solubility curves, so what we see, so first of all you should know what is actually a solubility or sorry, what is actually a solubility curve, solubility we have already done. So you already know about the solubility, right? So I am talking about the solubility curve. Solubility curve means and we, we know that the solubility is greatly affected by the temperature. As we have seen that when we were increasing the temperature, the solubility of gas in liquid was decreasing. So this is how now, now we are just going to start with the solubility curves.